In this section, we are going to spend some time talking about complex numbers. But before we get into uh, complex numbers and what they are, let's go ahead and let's look at the number system that we are used to dealing with. And that is the real number system. The real number system is comprised of this portion of this graphic over here on the left hand side. And the real numbers are all the numbers that you are used to dealing with, starting with the numbers that you count your fingers with, integers, rational numbers like fractions and decimals. We have irrational numbers such as pi and e. All of these uh, numbers that are contained within this rectangle here of reals are the numbers that you've been dealing with for the most part. Now, we have a complex number system which is comprised of both real numbers and this other component over here which are the imaginary numbers. And imaginary numbers are the ones where we had an I associated with that number value there. When we combine reals with imaginaries, we get the complex number system. And that's really what this section is going to be about. So, Complex numbers are real numbers and imaginary numbers. We already know what real numbers are, so let's take a second to talk about the imaginary unit. When we are dealing with imaginary numbers, we define it or we denote it, let's say, by the letter I. And it's defined as this right here. I is equal to the square root of negative 1. I squared is just simply negative 1. So if I took the square root of both of these, the square root of I squared and the square root of negative 1, that's how we get I is equal to a, the square root of negative 1. Okay, so let's kind of look at an example here to get an understanding of this. If I start with the number square root of negative 25, well, in the real number system, I can't take the square root of that because I know I can't take the square root of a negative value. But instead of looking th at this as negative square uh, 25, what if I thought of it instead as a negative 1 times a 25? So negative 1 times 25. If that's the case, then I can take the square root of the negative 1 square root of 25 and I am making progress. We know that the square root of negative 1 is I because that's the definition we're working with. And we can multiply that by the square root of 25. Now the square root of 25 we already know is 5 and so we can just simply, we can simplify the square root of negative 25 as 5 I, which is over here on the end. So that brings us to then, so if, if we have our imaginary numbers defined, that lets us then talk about complex numbers. Now complex numbers are simply the formation of both a real part and an imaginary part. We don't always have both parts, but a kind of a strange thing to think about is all numbers can be represented as complex numbers. So as long as we can def uh, uh, def discern or identify the real portion, which is usually the, the letter in the f or the value in the front, okay, our real portion, and then we have our imaginary portion, which will always have our I next to it, the combination of the real and the imaginary gives us our complex numbers. So for example, if I had the number 3, okay, 3 can be written as a complex number by the number 3, which I know is real, plus, oops, let's go back to that, plus the imaginary part, which is really just 0 times i, because 0 times anything is just 0, and that gives me the real part 3. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here in this section is complex numbers and what are we going to be able to do with them. And we're going to look at that in the next set of videos.